In this video, we're going to quickly cover some basic linear algebra computations in NumPy. NumPy is obviously a very good array computing library in Python, and it offers a linear algebra module and other tools to compute operations on matrices such as calculating the inverse, calculating the determinant, and calculating eigenvectors and values. There's a lot of things you can do, so we're going to cover some basic facts of linear algebra in this tutorial. And we're going to use examples from this Berkeley PDF file that I've got here, and I've opened that up here. And let's start by taking the determinant of a matrix in NumPy, and then we will show that the determinant is actually equal to the product of the eigenvalues of the matrix. Now we're not going to cover what these mean in a deep mathematical sense, but we are going to show you how to compute them in NumPy. So let's go back to the notebook and we're going to define an array and I'm going to paste this in here. I've got that prepared. And if we print off the array, we'll see that we have a two by two matrix, uh, two rows, two columns, and we're going to now take the determinant of that matrix in NumPy. You can do this with the Linalge module and it's a function called det and we just pass the array in to that function. And we see that the determinant of this matrix is 10. Um, there's a small about amount of round off error here, but it's basically 10. Um, so that accords with the formula that you might know from maths for a two by two matrix. The determinant is the diagonals multiply together. So AD, that's 22 minus BC minus 12. So 22 minus 12 is 10, so that gives us the correct determinant here. And what we can do is we can prove this statement here, for this array at least, that the determinant is equal to the product of the eigenvalues of the matrix. So we've got a determinant equal to 10. Let's now compute the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors, and we can do that with another function in the Linalge module, and that's the eig function. Again, we just pass the, the NumPy array in, and if we look at the eigenvalues we get back, and we get two eigenvalues back here, 0 0.8, 12.1. So if we multiply those eigenvalues together, we should see that they equal 10, and that proves that the determinant is equal to the product of the eigenvalues for this array. So let's try that just now. We can use the numpy.product function to uh, compute the product of all the eigenvalues in that vector and we get 10, so that matches up with the determinant. So for this given array, we've proven that the determinant is equal to the product of the eigenvalues. And now we'll move on to the trace. The trace is equal to the sum of the eigenvalues. So let's see how to compute that in NumPy. We're going to show a few functions here. Um, so we'll have a new cell for this. NumPy has a trace function built in and that allows you to compute the trace of a NumPy array. So if we pass in the array here, we should get that the trace is 13 because that's 2 plus 11. Um, and what we can do is we can also, I'll show you the diag method as well. So numpy.diag, we pass the array in there, that will give you back the diagonals of that matrix, which is 2 and 11. And then if you wanted to compute the trace manually, you would sum those up and that gives you 13. So that's quite easy to do with a two by two matrix, but you can imagine that you may have a matrix that's much larger. So to compute the trace, you've got a handy function here. So let's now prove what this says here, that the trace is also the sum of the eigenvalues. So the trace is 13, which we've verified with this statement here. We, all, we have the eigenvalues here, and if we sum them up together, mp.sum, we should see that that's also 13. So we've proven that for this array, the sum of the eigenvalues is equal to the trace of the matrix. And we can also prove that the array transpose will have the same trace as the array itself. So if I look at the array.t property, we get the transpose of the matrix. And numpy.trace called on that particular transpose will give you the same trace as the original array and that makes sense because the transpose doesn't do anything to the diagonals of an array it only switches the non-diagonal elements row by column in a two by two case so that shows that fact we're now going to cover another fact from the paper let me just quickly load up this paper again 
So the fact we're going to look at is something that's covered at the bottom of this paper whenever it loads up. And it's this fact here. If we multiply the matrix A by another matrix P and then apply the inverse of P to the result of PA, then we should have that the trace of that matrix is the same as the trace of A. So let's write that up now by creating a new matrix P. And P is just going to be something I'm going to copy here. Just a new matrix in NumPy. So let's have a look at P. So this is different from the array matrix that we've been working with so far. So what we want to do is we want, want to multiply P by A and then multiply by P inverse. So what we can do to do that is we can use the at operator, which is the matrix multiplication operator. We can mul multiply P by A and then we can multiply by the inverse of P, which we can get with another function in the NumPy Linalge module, and that's the inv function. And we'll pass P to that. And that will return the inverse of P if it exists. If the matrix is non-singular, it will give you back the inverse. Um, so if we look at that calculation there, and remember the array is actually called array here, the original A that we're working with. This is a new matrix, but we should find that the trace is equal to the trace of our original matrix. It should be 13, and it is. So even though these are totally different matrices, I'll, I'll just print them out. This is the result of P, applying P to the array and then applying the inverse. We have that and we have the original array, but the traces are the same. So numpy.trace of the array is equal to numpy.trace of this operation here. This will evaluate to true, as you can see down here. So that proves that fact here. Now there's one last fact that I want to prove in this video. I'll just copy some text here. And that's that the eigenvalues of a triangular matrix are equal to the diagonals of that matrix. So a triangular matrix is one which you have numbers across the diagonal and either above the diagonal but all zeros below or you have numbers below the diagonal but it's all zeros above the, the diagonal. Those are called triangular matrices and they have some nice properties that can be helpful when doing computations. We're going to look at some of that stuff here. So I'm going to define a totally new array. It's going to be a three by three array. Let's look at that. So just random values in here. It's three by three. So what we can do is we can make an upper triangular matrix from this original matrix A. And we can do that with the try u method. We'll pass our array to that. And this will turn this three by three array into an upper triangular matrix. If I print u, you see that because it's upper triangular, we have numbers above the diagonal and on the diagonal, but below the diagonal, we have now got zeros. So this is an upper triangular matrix. What we want to do now is compute the eigenvalues of u and then prove that those are equal to the diagonals. So if you look at the diagonals of this matrix, you have three, you have five and you have 11. So we, we expect to see that the eigenvalues of u are equal to these diagonals. So we'll use the same numpy linalge.eig function to get the eigenvalues and vectors. We'll pass the upper triangular matrix u. And let's look at the eigenvalues now. And we expect to see a, a vector with three, five and 11. And that's exactly what we get. So we're proving this final fact here. The eigenvalues of a triangular matrix are equal to the diagonals of that matrix. So that's all for this video. That was a whirlwind tour of some linear algebra functionality in NumPy. A lot of this stuff is built in and there's a lot more you can do with it. And this is the basis. Some of these operations are the basis for advanced machine learning and analysis. So that's a short introduction. There's much more you can learn out there. Thank you very much for watching. There will be a Jupyter Notebook on GitHub with a little bit more details. Please see the description for that. And thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.